Good afternoon and aloha. aloha. We welcome you to the Newman Center Holy Spirit Parish. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. If you are visiting for the first time or returning to Newman, we ask that you please stand so that we may recognize you at this time. <coughs> welcome back everyone. We just have a few announcements before we begin. This weekend is the collection for the UH Food Vault. Mahalo in advance for your kind generosity. Today is also our baccalaureate for our graduate students. Congratulations on your accomplishments. Study Haven is underway this week and available for all our car students. A detailed, a detailed schedule is in this week's bulletin and available on our bulletin board. For more information, see the campus minister, that's me, or any of our student leaders. For more information and updates within our parish and diocese, please pick up a Sunday bulletin after Mass and visit our parish website and social media sites. Our priest celebrant for this Mass is our pastor, Father Alfred. I now invite all of you to please stand and in the spirit of community and as one upon us, greet one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Please join us in our gathering song. Sing a new song in your reading red books, 556. It's 
Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continue to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the Twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task. Whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles, who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of the Lord continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious. And whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith. But for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as it is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon. How are you? Best. And surviving your final, right? <laughs> You know, when I was uh, reflecting upon this uh, gospel passage uh, for today's uh, re uh, for today's mass, the first thought that came to mind was uh, funerals, because this is the gospel passage, or at least part of it, um, is the gospel that I often choose for funerals, and um, it's very fresh in my mind because this past uh, week I did two funerals uh, here at Newman Center. Um, and then the reading for that Friday, uh, the day after, was this reading, and then now we have this reading uh, today. So very much um, in my mind and in my thoughts uh, for this funeral theme. Not exactly the joyful Easter reading, isn't it? But this reading is not to incite sadness, but instead to give us hope. The scene of the gospel is prior to the Lord's arrest, suffering, and death. It is on the night of the Last Supper with the Apostles, and it is part of uh, a larger body known as the Farewell Discourse of Jesus. But here, Jesus tells the Apostles, do not let your hearts be troubled. What exactly did he say that could cause them to be so disturbed huh? might be a question that might come up. They witnessed their, his healings all around um, Judea. He, they listened to his um, teachings. They even saw his power over demons. And yet, they were disturbed at what Jesus was trying to tell them. You know, previous to the farewell discourse, Jesus talked about one of the twelve betraying him and that his death was imminent. But he also told the disciples that he will be raised up after three days. But that seems to be lost in the thought of pain and suffering leading to real death, doesn't it? The disciples must be wondering why was he speaking this way? He was at the top of his career and it looked as though that he won over the crowds. But Jesus, knowing the will of the Father, must complete this mission given to him. To love and to obey even unto death. And so when the time comes, are the disciples to respond in fear? Well, the answer is not fear, but rather faith in the Father, faith in Jesus himself. Jesus says, you have faith in God, have faith also in me. And so through this, these words, he gives us peace and a promise that he will be with us forever. But, he, but not only that He will be with us forever, that He is going ahead of us to prepare a place for us in heaven with the Father. You know, we are approaching the, the, the next um, feast of the ascension of Jesus, where the Lord ascended into heaven and sits now at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. And so Jesus was preparing His disciples and essentially is preparing us that He is going to be there interceding for us, mediating um, humanity with God. And as a result, we are to keep this true destiny, this true um, calling always before us. And so we turn to Jesus because He is the way, the truth, and the life. And because He is the way, we are called to follow Him as disciples. Because He is the truth, we are called to live according to His teachings that He has given us, especially the command to love even when it hurts, even when it 
uh, leads us to death. And because he is life, we are called to share in his divine life, letting nothing separate us from God. Because when we know Jesus, we know the Father. But sometimes we need to see in order to believe, don't we? To see is to believe, and that will be enough for us, right? Well, we know from our human experience that once we see and experience, well, it becomes an afterthought a few moments later. And Jesus knows that. And so he says that if he is the way, the truth, and the life, his word is enough. In theology, Jesus is often referred to as the exegete of the Father, meaning he puts the face to the burning bush. Jesus reveals to us who God is by his own words and his deeds. And but he also calls us to imitate him. And I think that's the challenge for us on this fifth Sunday of Easter, the final Sunday before graduation. This is the last Sunday of our uh, campus ministry school year. And so these are the three things I want you to remember from today's readings. Number one, have faith and trust in the Lord even when you cannot see the plan of God clearly. Number two, believe in Jesus. To believe in Jesus means to do his works. So that, like as he says, we will do so much more. And third, be the best version of yourselves every single day by recognizing who we are in Christ and live according to this life in the Spirit. You know, it's been a month, it's been a month since Easter and lots have happened in our lives and in the world, in fact, in our parish. But the question, so the question we should ask ourselves, has the glow of the Easter feast left us? Are we back in that same old, same old attitudes or lifestyles? I know it's hard to keep up that enthusiasm of the mystery and marvel of Easter, especially with all the pressures that we might experience in, in university life and our own personal lives, and with finals and summer around the corner, Easter might seem to be like a celebration in the rearview mirror. But here's the good news. Every Sunday is supposed to be a little Easter. It is a celebration of the resurrection. And that is where we are sustained and nourished and fed to persevere in being a witness to the living Christ in the world. And we have a great gift that Jesus leaves us, and that is His Holy Spirit, the Spirit that dwells in us. Because this Spirit will not fail, either because of persecutions, disappointments, tragedies, trials, tribulations, pressures, or failures, or even sin, or just the passage of days, time, a months, and decades. Because the Spirit, my dear friends, gives us daily what we need to live as a holy people. So that we can truly be a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. And you know, today is our baccalaureate mass and certainly I am saddened because uh, many of you will be graduating. Um, and some of you were one of my first uh, students that, <laughs> that I was, uh, when I got here. So it's like having my children graduate <laughs> and leave the nest. Uh, and so I'm a little sad, but the words of the gospel really um, struck, uh, struck me. Let your heart not be troubled. And so to our graduating class of 2023, May you remember your time here at Newman Center, Holy Spirit Parish, and make us proud as you witness to Jesus, who is the risen one in the world.
And so as a community of faith, we profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. The gods are not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. Trust men for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified and quenched his heart. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have an end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus told his disciples to not allow their hearts to be troubled. In faith, let us place our needs in God's care. For the church, only faithful. Faithfully follow Christ, who is the way and the truth and the life, obeying, obeying his command to love one another and showing the world the way up to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders here and abroad may work to tear down structures that bring injustice, inequality, and poverty to the disadvantaged around the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all students, faculty, and staff, as they prepare for final examinations, graduation, and the end of the semester, that the labor that they that led to these days prepare them for a happier and holier life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our student community and for all gathered here, that may be that may be renewed in mission and purpose, while welcoming the stranger, serving the needy, and proclaiming the news, good news to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers on our parish website, prayer book, and for those now mentioned. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the end to all violence around the world, for peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Merciful God, for centuries your people witnessed your mercy. Hear the prayers we make and answer them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we offer our gifts, please do and sing our offertory song. Peace I leave with you, song number 540, song number 540.
Pray, brothers and sisters, with my sacrifice, and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice, have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Passion of your 
Son, His wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven. And as we look forward to His second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving His holy and living sacrifice. Let me pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John Henry Newman, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Larry, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord. And lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. of 
arts in Korea. We have our honorary graduate, Emmanuel Pichai, who will be receiving his Associate in Arts and Liberal Arts at Kapiwalani Community College. Nicolette Sandoval, Bachelor of Education in Early Childhood and Elementary Education. She has served as our Newman Club Student Council member and our Women's Study Bible Study Leader and also our mentor. Karina Alexandra Sevilla, Bachelor of Education in Exceptional Students and Elementary Education. minor in music. She will serve as a new class city council member, our Cohen Bible study leader, a lecturer, and as a choir leader. Grace Nicole Webb, Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology and Rehabilitation Sciences. Gino Quintal, Master of Science in Quantitative Health. Through Christ our Lord. 